Good afternoon. Just going for a little hike here on the eastern shore near Porter's Lake. We're going to walk up an ATV trail, which is um, quite icy in this part. We'll see how the rest of the trail is. Probably should have brought some ice cleats, but I'll just take my time. So this trail is an ATV trail, not really a hiking trail. But uh, ATV trails are great for walking up because you do get to see, usually they uh, meander along interesting features of the landscape. And this particular trail goes up um, along the West Brook that empties into Porter's Lake. So we are quite close to where the brook goes into Porter's Lake. We're just at, I believe, the north, north end, maybe, of, of Porter's Lake. And we'll get to see some nice views of the brook itself. So this, these trails, there's a network of trails up here that extend pretty far, like probably, um, I don't know, maybe 100 kilometers or more. We're not walking 100 kilometers today. We're just gonna do, depending on conditions of the trail um, and how fast I can move, just maybe four kilometers in and four kilometers out. So I'm expecting to see the ATVs up along this trail. When I drove in here, there was, uh, gosh, at least a dozen um, vehicles with ATV trailers on them and, and no ATVs, so they're up here somewhere. Um, this trail runs along both banks of the east of the West Brook. Um, and I think most of the ATVers use the trail that's on the other side of the brook. But I would expect to see um, a few people up here today walking. It's a pretty popular trail as far as um, ease of use. It's really hard to get lost. The terrain generally is pretty easy to walk. It's quite scenic. So there might be a few folks out here today walking their dogs. Um, and we may see some wildlife, although that would be pretty unusual, I think, for this trail. You might see some birds and that sort of thing. Um, it's quite a nice day. It's February of 2023, and it's been a pretty wet winter here in Nova Scotia. Um, not a ton of snow, that's not that unusual. We have had a lot of rain though, so that's a little unusual. So that would, uh, that accounts for why this trail is so icy today, because it is just below zero. I think it's about minus two degrees Celsius. Um, I'm expecting that the brook itself is not going to be frozen, but we'll see. And we're just coming up to a little, we've got a little tributary that goes into the brook. We're on a nice bridge here, and that's open on this side, flowing nicely into the brook. But on this side, you can see it's frozen. So let's go.
hear a couple of ATVs over on the other side of the trail here. And the brook is uh, flowing nicely, but there's definitely some snow cover and some ice in there as well. A couple of little flurries happening here. quite nice. It will be, will be quite peaceful when these ATVs head on up the trail or down the trail. I try to spend a lot of time outdoors um, all year round, weather permitting. And a lot of people ask me about hiking in the winter and I quite like hiking in the winter. Um, winters aren't terrible here in Nova Scotia, despite what other people might tell you who are from here. <laughs> uh, but it's, our winters tend to be pretty mild. We get, you know, snowstorms and rainstorms and that sort of thing, but the weather's not bad here, I don't think. It's not extreme colds like it is in, out further west, even as far west as New Brunswick, they get a ton of snow. Um, we don't get a ton of snow here, but what's really nice is like today, it's about minus two degrees Celsius, so that's just under freezing. And guess who does not like being out in minus two degrees? Bugs. No bugs. So that is a, a really big advantage of hiking in the winter. Um, you don't really need any bug spray, any bug protection, nothing, nothing like that. Um, there are a lot of ticks here in Nova Scotia and the ticks apparently do live and will feed year round. Um, way less, you're way less likely to get a tick on you in the winter, but it's still possible. Um, dogs get them a lot, but that's because dogs are running through brushy areas. And as you can see, I am really not encountering any vegetation where I'm walking. It's all around me, but you have to, you have to be pretty close um, to vegetation, like brushing up against it for a tick to crawl onto you. Um, so yeah, if you're thinking about getting out in the winter, no bugs, so get out there. The other nice thing is um, you don't really need a huge amount of sunscreen um, as you can see, I'm all covered up with the exception of my face. The UV index in the winter tends to be pretty low, so I'm not, I'm not wearing any sunscreen today. I'm also in a relatively shady tra uh, trail, which most of the trails that I walk on are pretty shady because they have lots of tree cover. And today it's actually, it's pretty cloudy today as well, which I know doesn't completely negate getting sunburned, but it's really not a concern today. And of course, the other thing with the sun, or um, not being directly exposed to the full force of it, is heat. So I don't like being hot and sweaty. So the nice, really nice thing about hiking in the winter, or spring and fall for that matter, is that uh, you don't have to wear shorts and a t-shirt. You can layer up when and if I get hot today. Um, I'm wearing multiple layers on my top and my bottom, so I won't likely take my pants off, but it's possible that I will take my one of my, either my jacket or my sweater off. So you can kind of adjust your clothing to how your body is feeling. And in the summer, it's really hard to do that. Once you get down to shorts and a t-shirt, you can't really take anything else off. <laughs> I mean, you could, but uh, the more you take off, the more exposed skin you have, the more likely you are to get sunburns and bug bites in uncomfortable places. So get out there and enjoy the, uh, the winter weather big disadvantage is for some people it's going to be the cold and I do get pretty cold hands um, 
I have big gloves on today, so that's not really an issue. And uh, ice, I did not plan appropriately for the ice on this trail. And it is pretty slippery, so I am not hiking at my usual breakneck speed. Um, not that I ever hike at breakneck speed, but that's okay because uh, it provides more time to enjoy this lovely brook that I'm walking up right now. And it's uh, it's really lovely. And aside from having to look at my feet and where I'm walking a lot, which I do when it's, whether it's covered in snow or ice or just mud and rocks, um, you know, you get to enjoy the, the babbling brook. Um, another nice advantage of hiking in the winter is there's there is some open water if you look here that ditch is open um, and this trail in the summer does tend to be pretty muddy in areas and there's really really big puddles but there's pretty much no chance of me getting a soaker today my feet are gonna stay nice and warm and dry assuming I don't do anything stupid take any stupid chances with uh, puddles that look like they're not fully frozen, that sort of thing, so, um, so I'm quite comfortable walking in this weather. One thing I will caution you, hiking in the winter, and actually in the summer too, depending on temperatures and wind and that sort of thing, um, bring your Kleenex, bring your tissues, um, I've already blown my nose once. I anticipate blowing my nose several times on this short hike. So I think I've made it to what is going to be my destination for today. This is a pond that uh, I frequent a lot in the summer because it's, it's really beautiful. You can't really tell that it's a pond right now because it's frozen. So just the, uh, the middle channel is open, which you can see sort of right, right up here. But I'm standing on the edge of the pond and uh, this this ground is pretty well frozen and right here it, it transitions from sort of solid ground into muck and then pond. So I kind of just wanted to look at the conditions um, of the pond in the winter, just for curiosity's sake. A couple of beavers live here and um, I'm hoping I don't wake them up because they are pretty territorial. <laughs> They have definitely um, come and tried to scare me away a few times and have been successful at that. Um, so I'm gonna try and be quiet, although I am talking loud enough right now that I'm afraid I am gonna wake them and I will have to dash up the bank and get out of here. So let's have a look at the pond a little bit more. There are a couple of pretty little ducks out there, pretty little birds. Blend in really nicely with the uh, little chunks of river fluff. So I'm not sure that you can see, but they are, let's see, kind of right there. Two of them just hanging out. I'm not sure what kind of birds they are. I'm not great at identifying birds. But they're, uh, yeah, just chilling. I wonder if they have a nest here or something somewhere around here. Something that I, I really enjoy doing on any trail, um, either at the destination if it's a short walk or just along the trail for a rest, is to just have a seat on my sit pad, which costs, I think, $7 at Decathlon. 
decathlon is great for inexpensive um, hiking equipment. So I'm just sitting here now on, I'll show you this little pad, which uh, folds up nicely and I stick it in my pack. It's great to take a load off, keeps your bum dry and warm. And you can just sit and um, I like to have a snack. Snacking is one of my favorite things to do on hikes, but I didn't plan my uh, eating very well today. So I ate just before I came here, which means I'm not very hungry. I did bring a granola bar with me just in case I got hungry or just in case something happened. And, you know, I ran into someone who was starving or something, but uh, so I'm probably not going to eat my granola bar. I'm just going to sit chill out for a little bit and drink some water. I haven't had any water since I walked, started walking this trail today, which is only an hour ago, but that's unusual for me. I usually drink and drink and drink, mainly because if you're carrying the water in, I don't want to carry any of it out because it is heavy. Um, so I brought about a liter of water, which is more than enough. And uh, if I had run out of water for some reason, um, I would definitely just dip my my bottle into the stream here which is uh, nice and clear and pretty tasty and I have a life straw with me which um, is basically a little device that uh, filters the water for you it's a kind of a, a thick straw that you can either stick directly into a water body or you can I tend to stick it into my water bottle because it's easier to drink that way um, so I have, I carry that just for emergencies if I spill my water and something, but today's hike, maybe two hours. So it's unlikely I would die of thirst <laughs> while I'm out here, even in very dry conditions. Um, so I'm just going to rest for a little longer and enjoy the pond, which I'm looking at here. The partially frozen pond and the couple of little ducks that are black and white hanging out over there. Still haven't woken the beavers, so we're doing good. So I had my little rest at the, uh, up at the pond and I'm headed back out down the trail. Um, the trail's pretty flat as you can see, but it does, we walked up the brook and now we are walking back down. So the trail gradient tends to be sloped down on the way out. Um, so I find walking down on slippery surfaces a little bit more treacherous than walking up. So I'm walking down the, the very icy path here. Broke out the walking stick, which I use for most of my hikes anyway. Um, so a tip for anyone who's a little nervous of walking in the on an icy trail uh choose ice if it's pure ice all ice choose ice that's kind of textured so this ice is this is not a groomed trail it's not plowed or anything i don't i don't believe um the ice itself is kind of lumpy so if you can choose ice that is lumpy it gives your shoes something to hang on to but for the most part where I'm walking down here, I'm walking along the edge of the trail. You can hear the change of the sound of my boots crunching. And the snow is, uh, tends to be less slippery. So I'm trying to stay to the edges as much as I can because there is less chance of me falling down and breaking something. Um, there are obviously areas where that's not possible like right here it's uh i'm just walking across ice right now there really isn't an option because the trees are so close to the edge of the trail here so uh yeah that's a winter tip and if you get a chance like this area that i'm walking in right now it's all open it's wet but uh you know maybe a centimeter or two of water in here so that's going to be the least slippery choice that you can make on your trail hikes. Isn't 
out lovely. Here we are looking downstream with this uh, such a beautiful little brook. I love the color of the water. There's a, a lot of the watersheds in Nova Scotia have this tea colored water colored by tannins, which is uh, a compound in trees and vegetation. The tannins are also what gives red wine its color, so that's, that's why it's this rich brown color. I always say it's when I'm out with other people in the wild places, I always say, ooh, the brown water, it's my favorite color of water. <laughs> starting to freeze up mid-February. It's been kind of a warm, wet winter, so we're not totally frozen, but there's definitely some ice on the banks. And I'm not sure if this brook completely freezes over on the top. I'm sure it's, it keeps flowing on the bottom, I'm, I'm sure, in most winters, I would think. But this winter, we are behind schedule. Just about back to the trailhead. All in all, I hiked for about two and a half hours, but that included um, my little break at the pond. And I think it's uh, about seven, seven and a half to eight kilometers, this whole, the, tra the section of the trail that I did. It does go a little further. And then beyond that, um, it crosses the brook and goes over to the other side and joins up with the, the network of trails that are over there and there's a lake a little further back so there is a little more to explore um i'm sure i'll be back in the spring i'll be here several times in the summer so i will try and um, film some of that as well depending on what i'm doing and how hot it is and how bad the bugs are and all the rest of it but uh yeah so this is a little little hike up the west brook of porter's lake hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like and you can hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more videos like this. Thanks. Bye.